Everyone, thanks for joining me. First of all, I want to thank you for your great response on my last embroidery for beginners video. If you haven't seen that one, I will link it in the description below if you're interested in that. But after that video, I did a, um, a makeup towel and I had so many requests to show applique and to show the beach towel and to show how to use the water soluble stabilizer. So I'm going to show you how I made this version of a beach towel. Now this one has the applique, so we're going to do some applique and I'm going to make a matching one for Evie. So in order to do this project, you're going to need your embroidery hoop and you're going to need of course your embroidery machine you're going to need a towel i get these at walmart they're slightly less than five dollars for something um, you're going to need some fabric to cover your applique and then of course some coordinating thread in addition to that we're going to need tearaway stabilizer and if you remember from the last video i told you that i use this in almost every project at least at a beginner level that's some, what you're going to start with so this is tearaway stabilizer and then we're going to need the water soluble stabilizer. I will link this in the description below. There's all different kinds and you can get basically any of them. They're <clears throat> basically all the same thing. But what you need this for is when you are embroidering on top of something that has a plush, such as a terry cloth of a towel, you need that on top because it will hold the, um, the plush fabric, it kind of holds that down so that the stitches don't sink into the, um, the plushness and to kind of disappear. So it makes the, the stitches set on top of the project. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and again, I'm not getting into the technicalities of how to create the file because everybody's got a different machine, everybody's using different software. So I'm going to assume that you already have a file with the applique that you wanna put on it and we're just going to jump right into this tutorial. Hold on and I'll flip the camera around and we'll get the uh, hoop set up. So the first thing we're going to do is cut our tearaway stabilizer to fit our frame. So I'm just going to roll a piece of this out, make sure that it fits and cut that off. You can just use scissors. You don't have to use a rotary cutter. I just find that the easiest. I'm going to rotate my frame because when I put it on my machine, my um, it goes in my machine this direction so I just like to keep things oriented the way they're going to go in the machine just to keep it straight and we're just going to put the stabilizer on top and hoop our frame on mine there is an L and an R a left and a right so I always make sure that's the right side up I'll, even though this is a square frame it does not fit this way which is odd to me but the inside area is square so you're just going to place it on top of your frame, try to keep that stabilizer as taut as you can and get that fit in there. I like to get three sides in and then, oops, tighten the fourth. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's nice and taut, everything's in place. Okay, so we're done with the tearaway. The next thing we're going to do is mark our center. So I'm just going to line up a ruler with the center mark here and the center mark here and make a mark. This isn't a fancy pen or anything. It's just a regular old ink pen. And I'm gonna make a mark here. There I have my center point. Done with that. Now this is optional. I'm going to spray it with the temporary adhesive. This is the 505 adhesive. You should spray this over a trash can and in a well ventilated area. I'll do it on screen just so that you can see it. But typically I would not spray this on top of my cutting mat or anywhere near my machine. All right, so now we've got some sticky adhesive on there. So we have our temporary adhesive on here. I'm also going to add these binder clips to my hoop. I just like to do this just to ensure that the hoop does not pop open during my session. Totally optional, you don't have to do that. I do have Janome clips, but I like using these better. All right, so we have our towel and I like to put the um, image just about, let's see, let me get my ruler. 
it's about four inches from the bottom of the towel. I don't really measure it. I just kind of eyeball it. I just leave the bottom of the towel slightly over the edge of the hoop. So what I'm going to do is open up my towel and there's one in that has a tag right here. So I'm going to go to this end. So this is the end that doesn't have the towel and I'm going to fold it in half wrong side or right sides together. So I'm looking at the wrong sides. That's going to establish the center. All right. So I am, this is where it hooks to my machine. So I'm going to put the bulk of the towel out this way. You could also have it towards you, whatever way you want to work it. I like to work in this direction. It just works well for me. So what I'm going to do is place this fold right here on the horizontal line and kind of push it down. And then I'm going to open it and straight as possible. Now we've got that down. I can kind of feel where those points are, the center points of my hoop right here. So I'm kind of just double checking, making sure that's falling right in the middle of that stripe. It is, it's, there's my crease from when I folded it in half. So it's nice and center. So right now my design is going to go right there in that center line. I'm going to put the design this way. So I need to add this water soluble stabilizer because we are embroidering on top of a plushy surface. So what I'm going to do is cut this slightly bigger than what my area is going to be that I'm going to embroider. And you're just going to place that on top. Now, some people have told me that you can use the sticky stabilizer or the, some people have said that you can use the temporary adhesive on top of this to hold it down, which is an awesome idea, or you can just pin it down. If you don't have the 505 spray, you can um, you can also pin the towel down to the, the stabilizer. You don't have to use the sticky. I just like it. I think it makes everything easy. Uh, when you're putting your pins in, you want to make sure and stay away from the edges where your actual design is going to be. And you don't need a ton of pins. Be careful you don't tear your your um, your stabilizer. You could also tape this down. The only thing I don't like about taping on the towels is sometimes when you remove the tape, it snags the towel. So I don't like to use tape when I'm using towels. But you can you could definitely tr try it. All right, so we've got our stabilizer down. I might even put another one over here. It's pretty forgiving but you don't want it to get wrinkled up under your applique. All right, so we've got our stabilizer in, in place. We've got our towel in place. Everything is clipped into place and we are ready to go over to the machine. So I'm gonna set the camera up over there and show you where we go from here. Okay, so here we are at the machine. I've put my design on my flash drive, so I'm just going to pull that up. Um, and just a little side note, it looks like that screen is flashing on the video. It's not in real life. It's just the a difference in the rate of the video versus the rate of the frame that it's filming at. So it's not really flashing. So I've got my design all set up the way I want it. So now I'm just going to hit start. And what it's going to do, it's going to place what's called a placement stitch. It's going to stitch the first letter out, which is the E, and it's just going to stitch the outline, and that's going to tell me where the fabric needs to be. So it's just making a single line stitch just around the outline of the E. And I'm going to try to zoom in here to see if you can see it. It's kind of hard to see with the glare 
but there's just a basic outline of the E. And here, I'll actually take it off of the hoop. I think that'll be easier for you to see. There you can see it. So there is the outline of the E, and that is just to show me where to put the fabric. So I'm going to cut some fabric that is long enough and tall enough to fit over this E. I like to cut a little bit of extra fabric. And like I said, I always spray starch my fabric before I put it on the applique. So let's stick this back on the machine. And you're going to want to be very careful as you're attaching and detaching this from your machine that you don't um, have it pop out of the hoop, which is also why I put those clips on there. And you also don't want to move your towel or anything from the applique area. So I've got this back on. Normally I wouldn't even unhoop it or un detach it from the machine at this point. I would just leave it on the machine. You can see I've got my strip of fabric here and this is enough fabric to do the entire design. You just want to make sure that it is as wide as a slightly bigger than your letters. My letters are three inches, so I cut this fabric about three and a half inches. And you might want to kind of play with where the placement of the fabric is based on what you want to show. So I'm kind of just holding this over the letter E. I kind of want to get the most color into the applique as possible. So I'm kind of just playing with where to place the fabric so that I can get some of the flowers in there. So I think I'm going to, there's my E, so I'm just going to find a spot where the flowers are going to show. I think I'll go this direction. And yet it's enough fabric. You want to make sure that that E is completely covered. That outline is completely covered. So I'm just double checking my placement, making sure the flowers are going to show up where I want them. I'm going to move my tail out of the way. Put the presser foot down and I'm just going to hold this fabric in place. Be very careful when you do this. You could pin it into place if you want. I'm going to let it stitch a few stitches and then I'm going to stop it and snip off that tail and let it finish. This is called the tack down stitch. So it's just going to stitch that fabric down and I'm just holding the fabric flat, keeping my hands away from the needle. Now it's going to stitch the center of the E. So now the fabric is tacked down into place. So what we do at this point, we're going to lift the presser foot, detach it from the machine, and we're going to use our scissors and we have to now trim around it. So you can see here the E is stitched down. Okay, so hopefully you can see, I tried to do this in colors that would be easy to see, but I guess it's not. You can see the pink outline of the E and the, the fabric around it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the excess fabric just to make it easier to trim. So again, this is why I, as I showed in the first video, on embroidery. I love to use these scissors because it makes it very easy to get in here inside the hoop and work. So the next thing I want to do is start trimming the fabric away from the or the excess fabric away from the edges. You want to cut as close to those stitch lines as you can on the outside without cutting through them. And make sure that you rotate your hoop and work in a way that you're not contorting your hand and trying to get around these things because it's very important that you get a nice clean cut around the edges as close to the stitches as you can. Now you're only cutting through the fabric layer. Leave your um, water soluble down. So I'm just gonna hold it up. And again, I'm just cutting as close to those stitches as I can. Just like that, there's my stitch line. I'm going to rotate my project to get around this curve. And you need to take your time with this step. It'll make a difference. I'm going to go up, cut around here just to give myself a little more space. And again, you want to cut, I know I keep saying it, but you want to get as close to those edges 
of the stitching without cutting into the stitching as you can. If you have fabric, extra fabric hanging out, it's going to show outside your applique. So you want to keep everything very tidy. And I find it easy just to kind of lift the fabric up. And I'll let my scissors do the work. If you cut into that water soluble, don't worry, it'll be fine, but we're trying to leave that intact. All right, now I need to go inside this E, so I'm just going to take my time, get my scissors under there, making sure I'm not cutting the fabric, or the towel, just cutting the fabric. So applique is not as fast as a, just doing a, some embroidery letters, but it's really cute. It's worth the ex, extra effort. And again, you want to make sure you keep everything hooped. Keep your hoop nice and tight. You don't want to move it because it'll lose its placement. I like to starch my fabric before I put it into an applique. I just give it a little bit of a spray starch with the iron and then place it. So I don't know if you can see, but you can see the stitching is right on the inside. So everything's still stitched down, but I trimmed as close to that as I could get. If you have any little threads, trim those off because those will stick through your satin stitch. All right, so let's go back over to the hoop. So we are back over at the machine. I've hooked the um, hoop back up and we're going to go ahead and let it do the next step, which is going to put the satin stitch around the edges. So we're going to put the presser foot down and hit start. We're on step three. Each applique letter has three steps. The placement, the tack down, and then the satin stitch. Better so you can see. So what it does is it places a stitch on the inside of the design and then one on the outside and then it goes so it's going just a little bit on the inside. So it's finished the E. Now the next step is going to be the placement stitch for the next letter, which will be the V. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it do that. Don't need to remove it from the hoop. So there's the V. So now I just need to grab my fabric again, and we're going to place that right over that design. Let's see if there's a piece I like better. Maybe we'll go on this end, try to get the bulk of the flower in there. I'll pull my tail out a little bit. I'm going to hold that in place and hit start. Keep your fingers out of the way. Sew a few stitches and stop. Cut that tail. So it stitched the V, so I'm going to remove it from the hoop, 
or not from the hoop, but remove the hoop from the machine, trim down, and then come back and I'm gonna finish the rest of the letters and then I'll show you what the finished project looks like. Okay, so we have appliqued all our letters on. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my pins out. I'm gonna turn it over and trim off any threads. Now mine automatically cuts the jump stitches. If yours doesn't, you might have to cut where it jumps from one spot to the other. It's going to leave like a long thread. You need to trim all those. I do need to trim the tie-offs where it starts and stops. It just leaves short little threads. So trim that off. You can go ahead and remove your clips and you can just completely unhoop it if you want or just tear it away from your stabilizer. Hence, tear away. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the front and take away Mr. Pen, take away the rest of your water soluble and it just tears away, throw it away. Inside the middle of any of your letters, the counters they're called, there's going to be a little piece of that stabilizer. You can also just wad this up and it will sort of stick to itself and help you remove those if you have any problem. So it looks really good. So then you just flip it over and here's what's left of your tear away and you simply just tear it away. And if you go right next to the stitches, you can just tear it away. This is why you can also use sticky stabilizer when you do towels. I don't like to do it because I find when I do this part that it tends to snag. And I don't want to snag the towel, especially if I'm giving this as a gift. So I'm just removing that paper. If there's any little pieces left that you can't really get, it will come out in the wash after the first wash or so. Let's see a couple more threads to trim. But there's the back after we have trimmed it. Got a little bit of a knot there. Get that out. But that is our finished towel. I think it's so cute. And now I have Ace and Evie have their own. Super cute. So when you go to make your design or to create one of these designs, you need to make sure that you're looking for a font that says it's an applique font. It does have the three steps. It will have the placement stitch built in. It will have the tack down stitch built in and it will have the satin stitch. Now, sometimes it doesn't do a satin stitch. Sometimes they have other stitches around the edges, other decorative stitches. Just depends on the look, but you'll know when you buy the font, it should have a picture of what it should look like when it's stitched out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, super beginner friendly. This is a very easy project. This is a beach towel, so I'm not too concerned about it being absolutely perfect. It's a great starter project where you can just have fun and wow your friends. And you know, even if it's not a beach towel, you could just do a towel like that for somebody's um, bathroom. That would be really cute. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Till next time, see you guys. Never stop making. Bye-bye.